All right, practice problem number two associated with simple problem D. A cat chases a mouse across a 1.0 meter high table. The mouse steps out of the way and the cat slides off of the table because you are dumb and strikes the floor 2.2 meters from the edge of the table. When the cat slid off the table, what was its speed? Okay, let's take stock of what uh, this question is giving us because if we can get used to understanding what we've been given, we're going to have a better chance, a higher likelihood of determining what type of maths we can use to get our what we're being asked for. So we are being asked for when the cat slid off of the table, meaning when it left the table, what was its speed? Okay, so, so we, we have a, a, a velocity, okay, specifically okay, in the x direction. Okay, and I'm going to be using that, hopefully you guys don't get confused, interchangeably with initial velocity so that I can uh, more easily choose one of my kinematic equations to use. Okay. What else are we given? One meter high table. Okay, now the cat is gonna fall off that table. So one one point zero meters high, that is delta y. Right? Delta y is one point zero meters, but the cat fell, right, due to gravity, fell that that one point zero meters. So considering our typical sign inventions, right, plus, plus, negative, negative, that delta y is actually in the negative, right, it's in the negative direction, okay, that just means down, as opposed to going up, right, uh, and we're, and then the, the cat slides off and strikes the floor, ha, that's funny, 2.2 uh, meters from the edge of the table, so, again, um, let's just assume that the cat was moving this way, Right in the x direction, so that will just allow me to keep the value positive. So let's draw our picture. So here is my tabletop. Here is my uh, the 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 edge of the table. And so what we have here is x direction, y direction, and so we we're gonna have. Again, acceleration operating in this y direction, moving down. Okay, so acceleration in the y direction is equal to uh, the force of gravity, but obviously it operates in the uh, down direction. So that's what we're going to represent that with a negative sign in front of g. And so acceleration ends up being 9.81 meters per second squared. So our setup is going to be pretty uh, similar to uh, the previous practice problem, practice problem number one, just using some different values here. Uh, but let, let's make sure that we draw our picture. So we have our uh, coordinate system here, just using normal uh, normal sign inventions. Uh, but we have uh, we have a cat that started up on up on the desk here, and then fell off. And then remember. It's going to have a, a parabolic motion, so we can just draw uh, our, our best our best version of a parabola there. So our total y displacement, right, from the top of the desk, or table, I should say, to the ground, okay, this is going to be our delta y, and that is going to be negative 1.0 meters. Now, in the x direction, how far did that cat travel? 2.2 meters. That is the delta x. And I believe we're ready to go. All right. So the idea here is we need to use a kinematic equation that has a displacement, that has acceleration, and that can solve for velocity. Okay. Now, it turns out our best chance is to use delta x is equal to initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half 
times acceleration delta t squared. Okay. Uh, now we're looking at displacement specifically in the x direction right now. Okay, so we're just looking at this part. So how can we fully describe this displacement? Okay, well, this displacement is going to be defined by how fast the cat is moving in this x direction, and then also takes into consideration how long the cat is actually traveling at that speed. Okay, classic, classic definition of, of displacement. Now, over here, we can actually get rid of this entire half of the equation because it's very important to understand and remember this simple fact. There's no acceleration in the x direction. Okay? There's no additional force being added to the velocity in the x direction. Okay, so there is no acceleration. No acceleration. Acceleration has a numerical value of zero. Right? So anything times zero. It doesn't matter how long uh, this time this time window is. So this part of the equation is still going to go bye bye. And so what I can do is I can I can start with this equation that allows me to solve for velocity because Remember, what I'm being asked all for by the question is that velocity, but I can rearrange it to look like that. So this is what I'm solving for, okay? Velocity, and, uh, the the initial velocity, or don't be con don't be confused if you listen to someone else explain this problem. They use velocity in the x direction because it's the same thing. Okay, right, because the only initial velocity that the cat has is as the cat is sliding this way. Okay, th there's no initial velocity in the y direction. Uh, the the question actually act has actually given me a delta x, right? That 2.2 meters. So the only issue is I don't have a delta t, and nowhere in this question does it give me delta t. So what I have to take into consideration is the y. Uh, the y component of the motion okay, in the, the y direction. So I'm going to use the exact same kinematic equation for the displacement, but it's going to be displacement in the y direction. So it'll be delta y, initial velocity, delta t, plus 1 half acceleration, delta t squared. Now remember, I already told you, that, uh, and the question is already indicated, and you should know, that there's no initial velocity in the y direction. All of this initial velocity is in the x direction. Okay, it's all in the x direction. Okay, all in the x direction. There is no initial velocity in the y direction. So, numerically, that is zero. And again, no matter how big this time interval is, anything multiplied by zero is zero. So this part of the equation actually goes away. And so I end up with a y displacement that can be described as one half acceleration multiplied by time squared. The reason this is important because I'm trying to get something that I can substitute in for this value. Okay, so if I can solve this version of the kinematic equation for this t value. I can plug it into this equation. And because I already have a value for delta x, I can solve for initial velocity or velocity in the x direction. So I'm going to rearrange this equation to solve for a delta t. And I gotta be careful because it also is squared. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. Okay, that's gonna get rid of that half. And I'm going to divide both sides by a, it's going to cancel a, and then I'm going to, again, remember this is squared, I know I have a lot of work going on here, but I have to square root both sides, and I'll get rid of that square. And so I end up with a representation of time that looks like it looks like that. Now that I have a delta t value, I can 
plug that in there. All right, so let's see what it looks like. Um, so I have, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, let's just do it. So that initial velocity, see on the camera. Initial velocity is equal to delta x divided by delta t. All right, that's what I already started with. But I'm going to substitute in this term for delta t because these delta t's are the same. Right, the the amount of time that the cat was in the air in the x direction is the same amount of time that the cat was in the air in the y direction. Right, in both directions, they were in. Cat was in the air for the same amount of time, so I can substitute that delta t for this expression. So let's do that. So I have delta x divided by 2 delta y divided by a, and that, remember, has to be square rooted. And right now, I have something that has solved for the initial velocity. Remember, that's what the question's asking for. And in order to solve for that initial velocity, I need to have access to three values, right? delta x, delta y, and acceleration. And I have all of those things. So all that's left to do is calculator work. Now for me personally, to make the calculator work a little easier um, on myself so I don't screw things up, I actually like to rearrange this. And you don't have to, you absolutely do not have to. I like to do it because it makes it easier uh, on the calculator that I use. But again, you do not have to. You can just plug this information in straight right here and, and you'll get the exact same answer. But what I like to do is represent this um, as the inverse of this fraction multiplying by that delta x. Because see, I hope you uh, can see that uh, we're dividing delta x by a fraction. Well, when you divide something by a fraction, it ends up being the same value as if you were to multiply by the inverse of that fraction. Now again, you do not have to do this. It just makes it easier on my calculator work, so I like to. I like to do that. So I end up with uh, that acceleration in that y direction, which again is a uh, negative uh, value of gravity, right? acceleration due to gravity. And it's going to end up being negative 9.81 meters per second squared. But I'm not going to put any numbers in yet. I like to keep it in that uh, variable state for as long as I can. Uh, and that's going to be 2 delta y. Again, remember this is square rooted. That'll get you there. Forget to square root that. And then now we're multiplying that fraction by delta x. So this ends up being a lot easier on the calculator, or at least as far as I'm concerned it is. You feel free to disagree. It's a negative 1.0 meters. That is square rooted. And I'm going to multiply that by, what was my x? A uh, 2.2 meters. All right. Um, and the question is using nothing but two significant figures. So uh, regardless of what the calculator tells me, I'm going to report that answer with two significant figures. And with two sig figs, that looks like that should be five point, or no, sorry, 4.9 meters per second.